of the great city of El Dorado. Hey, Anita, guess what? What, Brian? This is our last campus edge of the semester. Darn, for real? I'm gonna miss first semester, and it felt like it was just yesterday. Me too. I remember my first day on campus. What happened? I accidentally went into the boys' restroom. <laughs> That's not that bad. I know you're trying not to laugh, but didn't something happen to you also? Nope, I never get embarrassed. So that time when you didn't know you had bird poop on your back and everyone saw it doesn't count? That never happened. I don't know what you're talking about. Is that right? I mean, you were red as a cherry and I recall people taking pictures of you. I think we have a campus edge to do. And first we'll find out about Butler Public Safety. Next we see the body art that are tattoos and then check out a restaurant in Wichita that appeals to college students. Looking for a movie to pass the time? We have a perfect place here on campus where you can get some for free and a place off campus that brews their own beer for you older viewers out there. And last but not least, we have a review on a movie that is hot for this winter season. All that and more on Campus Edge. I feel so safe here at Butler. I have to credit the security for that, honestly. You know I gotta be a cop for a day, right? No, you didn't. W yes, I did, sort of. I mean, have you seen cops? I was a cameraman. That's still not being a cop. Doesn't matter. Let's see my action field experience. I'm investigative reporter Brian Harden for BCTV Channel 20. Today we'll be taking a look at the Butler Public Safety Department and all that they do for us. Come on, let's go. The Butler Public Safety Department acts as a vigilant safeguard for students and faculty at Butler, watching over them and monitoring their safety. I spoke with Officer Philip Crom to tell me more about what the Butler Public Safety Department does for Butler. The Public Safety Department uh, pretty much does everything that uh, an Eldorado police officer would do. Uh, we respond to uh, crimes, uh, vehicle accidents. Um, we do a little bit of the uh, stuff that a lot of police officers don't do. Um, we'll go out and unlock your vehicle for you if it's locked. If you lock your keys in it, we'll jump start your vehicle, we'll air your tires up, we'll change your tires. Um, we pretty much do everything. So. My jurisdiction is uh, the Butler campuses um, and then I also have uh, Tawanda Road up to the corner of Haverhill and from Haverhill all the way to Kichai and then from Kichai up to the uh, agri agricultural building. Um, and then in Andover, we also have the adjacent roads that are uh, adjacent to the properties. So. And is the Andover campus, I assume that's a separate department? No, it's actually our same department. We just have officers over there and officers over here. So. How are you and the El Dorado Police Department linked, if at all? Um, we try to work together cooperatively, um, but we are a separate um, they're, they're the Eldorado Police Department, we're the Butler Public Safety Department, so we're different departments. Um, but we all try to work and get along. So. Normally our, our day to day consists of vehicle unlocks, um, escorting students back and forth to class of a night with, if they need help. Um, just pretty much just whatever comes up. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, our chief of police will go over to, and he'll teach class at the Educare building and stuff like that. So, I mean, and we do a lot of teaching. We're not just police officers, we're also teachers. I mean, we go out and we teach what we've learned in the years that we've been police officers. So, For the Campus Edge, I'm investigative reporter Brian Harner for BCTV Channel 20. Now back to the studio. That was fun. I felt like I was truly fighting crime. Surprising you felt that way, considering I saw you take an extra scoop of ice cream in the cafeteria. Now you're just making things up. I am. How about we ask the security to pull the tape? That's not needed. It was an accident, okay? Accident. Sure. Do you have a tattoo? No, but I want one. I'm going to get my pet's name on my shoulder. That's very different. We have a piece on others with body art. Let's take a look. Reporter Chris Smith. Tattoos are becoming a more popular thing in our generation. So I'm here to find out why people get tattoos and what they truly mean to each own. Okay, my name is David Dellinger and I have a tattoo that says tattoo. Quite literally, it says tattoo. All right, so can you tell me the meaning? Why did you get this tattoo? Well, um, 
I was at a conference in Orlando and I kind of thought to myself, I want to remember this time, I had tons of fun, and for the longest time I had wanted like a really kind of a funny tattoo, uh, and of course funny is kind of subjective, but you don't really see anyone out there with a tattoo that says tattoo, so um, what it means to me is just that uh, it helps me remember the fun that I had in Orlando. Um, what made you decide to get tattoos in the first place? Well, I think most people like the idea of tattoos, and I'm certainly one of those people. I'm Olivia Vest. And yeah. can you tell me the meaning of your tattoos? Um, I have three tattoos, one around my spine, one on my rib cage, and one on my left arm. Each of them represent um, my siblings and my brother who passed away this summer. Why did you decide to get tattoos in the first place? Um, the day that I got my first tattoo was the day after my brother passed away, and my siblings and I, um, we were like, well... We were kind of out of it, and we wanted to keep our brother with us because we're all pretty close. And um, so we were like, hmm, maybe we should get tattoos. And we kind of peer pressured each other a little bit. And then we hopped on down to the tattoo parlor. And we were like, hey, guys, we want some tattoos. And so um, I got uh, the my siblings' initials. And one of my brothers got a gun, which he bought for um, the same model of gun he bought for my brother like a month before my brother passed away. And then my sister got a truck because my brother loves trucks. Can you tell me your name? Jennifer Ray. All right, and what is the meaning of your tattoos? I have one that my father and I designed, so there's meaning behind that. And I have one that my best friend from high school and I got together. Can you tell me why you decided to get tattoos in the first place? I like the way they look and that you can put meaning behind them. And there it is. For BCTV 20, I'm Chris Smith. We'll be right back. Go pick out some tattoo ideas to show your significant other over dinner. Time to think about dinner and I haven't even eaten breakfast yet. It takes a lot of passion to make the perfect meal. But today is one day closer to becoming a chef and owning my own restaurant. It's going to be a great day and an even better tomorrow. At Butler Community College, your tomorrow is closer than you think. Enroll now for classes. Butler Community College. Let's take tomorrow. Some of that ink was cool. I have a better idea of what to get tattooed on me. What is that, Brian? A flower. I saw a girl with it, and it looked nice. I hope she sees it, and then she'll know I like her. How about you just go talk to her? I'm not good at talking to girls. Wow, Brian. Well, maybe you can take her to the restaurant in the next piece for dinner. That's a great idea, Anita. I guess it wouldn't hurt to see it. Hello, Luna Cafe. What makes this Wichita restaurant so special? Is it the food? The atmosphere? Maybe even the staff? Or is it a mixture of all three? Well, I'm here to find out. Mateo, the owner and chef, has been in the restaurant business for a while. Uh, I've been working in the restaurant business for the last 25 years. I've worked uh, for uh, best of the best in Kansas for about 16 years in Wichita. And then after that, I decided to open my restaurant. So total about 25 some years. I started as a part-time when I went to Wichita State University just to get extra money and uh, I liked it so much I stayed in it and, and I'm, I'm, I love it. I originally came from Lebanon to Wichita State University. To, to, I studied business but like what I said earlier I, I started to get a, I, I wanted to get a part-time job and I, I stayed in it and, uh, and here, here I am. Bella Luna Cafe has been around for a while and is here to stay. I opened the first one 12 years ago at Central uh, and Oliver, and this one was the second two years later. I, uh, I'm not, I don't want to try to show off, but I think I am the competition for everybody in the city. This place, it's really, I tried, it's done by design. I, I tried to make it for everybody. You come into Bella Luna, you'll see the dishwasher at Applebee's sitting on this table, and you'll see uh, Dr. So-and-so on the other table. So it's really for everybody in Wichita, uh, because of the quality and because of the prices. So uh, it's affordable for everybody, plus the quality, uh, I mean, we don't take shortcuts, we serve uh, top quality, and so I am not worried about any competition. He may not worry about his competition, but he does make sure he puts attention to his customers. I, I just love the people, love talking to them, um, uh, seeing that they're excited about the food, happy or liking it, just that's what drives me every day. I treat every table like a, like a family. I. Uh, like what I said earlier, I enjoy people and I have a lot of friends. I made a lot of friends here at Bella Luna 
some of them come to see me, uh, not just to eat, just to come to see me. Uh, actually, we just had, uh, I invited about 10 of my customers. Uh, on Tuesday, we just stayed at Patio for like till 12 o'clock uh, as, as a f friends, you know, and they're all, they were my customer. That's where I met him. After we got to hear how well customers are treated here, we started to talk about the food. It is American Mediterranean. It's mixed. Uh, we do have some Mediterranean food and uh, we do have American like hamburger, salmon. Uh, so it's mixed. It's a little bit for everybody. My favorite dish, uh, there's a lot of the me my menu are my favorites, but the most one is uh, chicken scallopini and a chicken or shrimp curry. But, uh, I mean, we've got the hamburger, the salmon, I mean, they're all really, that we have uh, prime grade beef. They're really top of the line in the country. But my favorite is chicken scalapini and chicken curry. It's not an authentic curry. It's, uh, I, I, I change it a little bit. I mean, if you look at our hummus, uh, it's not an authentic hummus. I Americanize it a little bit, so, so everybody likes it. And this is what most of our item like this. And that's what makes Bella Luna Cafe so special. For BCTV20, I'm Dominic Ebersole. Have you ever seen those brewing commercials that claims they take hours upon days to make a perfect beverage? Yeah, but I think they're fabricating to appeal to the audience that their beverage is like higher quality. Well, I don't think that they are. And how would you know? You aren't even of age. I know, but I'm assuming they do. Do you have any proof to support your statement? Yes, I actually do. Well, Stephen does. That's not you, though. Well, I agree and support Stephen's piece on Central Standard Brewing, which counts. So now you're into politics? I could see myself becoming president. Maybe president of the underachievers, but let's see the piece. Good afternoon. I'm Stephen Steinbacher with BCTV20, and today we'll be taking a look at Central Standard Brewing. Welcome to Central Standard Brewing, a hip new venue right off of Douglas and Greenwood in downtown Wichita, open every Thursday through Sunday night. Co-owner and head brewer Ian Crane gave us a look as to what makes Central Standard Brewing so unique. Andy and I have been brewing beer together for 10 years, maybe a little longer than that, and you know we've always kind of had this, this dream of, of opening a brewery together one day, but we really took brewing beer very seriously, even years ago, wanting to perfect our, our recipes and treating it like a business uh, a long time ago. We'd bottle the beer, Andy would make labels, we'd go out and guerrilla market and, and share the beer. So we, we really kind of grew the, the, the brand years before uh, we even had our business plan put together and people you know were you know saying man I, I really like your beer when are you guys gonna open a brewery or you should open a brewery and so um, I think that was a, a big catalyst for for things to come of just sharing the beer kind of kind of getting a hype and, and getting respect in the uh, in the Wichita beer scene we've been working on getting the business open for probably a solid four years the building behind us here, uh, we bought back in December of 2013. After we found this location, we realized that being next to the park required a special permit for zoning. That required us to go through several processes and steps with the city to get the zoning amended. We had a lot of meetings with neighbors and city council members trying to find a resolution and common ground for what we wanted to do. We felt like the park was a really an asset to us. You know, you don't really find a business like this with so much green space around it in the middle of a city. We've also found that people have really responded to this type of location and we've built kind of a little community back here and we're trying to push that. I think this area is really going to grow a lot. Central Standard Brewing not only offers beer, but also has a wide array of food trucks stationed outside every day. It's awesome because we have different food available uh, every day um, that we're open so people can, you know, kind of, kind of plan and, and on coming and hanging out and, and trying something different, maybe something that wasn't available last week. We'll have a totally different food truck. You know, it works great. We know everybody who opened the brewery, so it's been really nice to kind of partner with them and do this. And uh, so I think, I think we're a good match. So we like to try to serve something when we're here for dinner that would go well with, with what they're serving inside. So it's a partnership. Now that you've seen what Central Standard Brewing has to offer, it's time to find out what the customers think of it. I like the view a lot. There's no traffic. 
You're facing the west. You get to watch the sunset. The people are friendly. Excellent service, and the beer is great. People are, are loving the beer. We're uh, extremely busy. Um, every night we're open, and we're selling out of beer, so things are, are going well. And uh, and it seems like the the city is really really responding well to to the business and to the beer. For BCTV 20, I'm Steven Steinbacher. Now back to the studio. We'll be right back. Make sure to go get your refills before we come back. It's that time. Time for caffeine. Time to remember why I'm up at this hour. Training and preparing for when things heat up. So when that alarm goes off, I'll be there to help. Everything I'm doing today is gonna make all the difference for tomorrow. At Butler Community College, your tomorrow is closer than you think. Enroll now for classes. Butler Community College, let's take tomorrow. I like to watch movies, but I don't know a place to go get some or watch them without spending money. I think I have a solution. <sighs> I guess, as long as it doesn't involve getting me in trouble. I usually just get on my computer and tour. Brian, I just said, as long as it doesn't get me in trouble. Oh, well, in that case, Tyler Morgan can help you. My name is Tyler Morgan, and I'm here at the Butler Student Library to see what these movies are all about. Movies are an important form of entertainment in everyday life, so I definitely had some questions I needed answered by the librarians. The Butler Libraries offer a pretty wide range of resources for students and staff. We have traditionally, you know, nonfiction books that people can use for research purposes, but we also have a nice collection of popular fiction. We have video games for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Wii. We have audiobooks, which have been, been quite popular with people who commute to, to and from work or school. And then we have DVDs and a few Blu-rays, which are very popular. We have a pretty well-rounded DVD collection. We own Nosferatu, we own several Alfred Hitchcock movies, we have all the James Bond movies, as well as you know, more modern classics like the Harry Potter and um, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean. We've got a lot of the Disney movies, so we, we try to make sure we get the new releases as well as sprinkle in some older things too. Another amazing collection that the library offers is the Criterion Collection, which is a video distribution company that specializes in selling what may be considered by many a classic movie. Here are some personal movie recommendations the library owns that I would suggest for anybody trying to catch up on the classics. Fight Club The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Now in book form These films The Cabinet of Dr. Calgary Citizen Kane The Dark Knight The Fifth Element Ghostbusters The Goonies The Godfather Swan Dog Millionaire The Marshall Wicklow Raging Charles Freddy's Revenge <laughs> And the Silence of the Lambs. The point is that the Butler Library has an endless supply of movies, but what if our El Dorado Library doesn't own the one you're wanting? We share the collection, so if there's something in El Dorado, we will deliver it to Andover or vice versa. So all of the materials are available to the students wherever they are. It just might take um, a couple days to get it delivered. Then I became curious, just how important are movies to those at Butler? Okay, so recently Jurassic World came out this past summer and that brought back memories because I was a kid when the original Jurassic Park came out and that was like a really big deal because the special effects were so amazing. So that was kind of fun to, to, ha to see Jurassic World come out and remember, remember that from my childhood. When I moved to Monterey in Mexico, um, I moved with one of my uncles that I didn't really see that much. He introduced me to the movie The Shining. I was really afraid actually for watching it for the first time. I don't know, I thought it was gonna be like super scary. So he took me like to McDonald's and we bought a lot of food and we were just like watching the movie and it, I don't know, I, I've never been with him like that and I actually liked that movie a lot. Um, me and my dad were not like as close. Like you know, with most parents, you know, they take their kids to ball games and stuff. Me and my dad, we bond with movies, mostly the superhero movies. So anytime a superhero movie comes out, we're usually going to one of those. 
I'm Tyler Morgan with BCTV, signing off. Speaking of movies, I know there's one big movie coming out soon. I think I heard of it, but I need some help remembering. The next piece should refresh your memory. Movies are a wonderful form of media that many can relate to. Children, teenagers, and even adults are able to gather around and become entertained for any amount of time, even up to three hours. Another great thing about movies is the lessons that can be learned from a certain character's decisions, the distractions they bring from everyday life, and just a great way to connect with fellow peers. That's why when Star Wars The Force Awakens comes out December 18th, there's plenty to get excited for. So here are four reasons to get excited for The Force Awakens. Let's get to it! First off, the OG cast is back. That's right, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, Kenny Baker, Anthony Daniels, and of course Peter Mayhew. Instantly there's a lot of great chemistry that is already built, and for fans of the original trilogy this means a lot of nostalgia. Now, onto the lightsaber design. At first there were many complaints about it, but let me tell you, it looks amazing. And the very idea that the lightsaber looks like this gives me a pretty good feeling about the movie, because not only are they willing to try something new, but they are just going with the idea of what would be cool to see as a lightsaber, and implementing a cool weapon that not only children would love, but fans of the original series will too. It being different gives us a hint that they might even be willing to go further. Another great reason many have to believe that this will be great is Kevin Smith. If you don't know who Kevin Smith is, he's an independent filmmaker who grew up as a huge nerd. He's one of the truest and most honest people in the game right now. So when he was invited onto the Star Wars set to see how the film was going, I was so excited to hear his opinion of it. So I was on the set, I saw costumes, I saw, you know, artillery and shit like that. I saw things that, you know, I loved as a kid. It, it was interesting, man. I was walking across the set and I was like, this is great. He's getting it so right. Like, all the elements were right. It looked like J.J. Abrams had the best set of Star Wars figures ever and was making the best possible movie one could. Even if the movie is not as good as any of the original three, there's still a reason to be excited. What's that, you may ask? Well, there's a huge chance that this will become the number one movie of all time. Think of the factors. J.J. Abrams is an already popular director who has quite the track record. The original cast is back. The movie started selling tickets two months in advance, and even then the ticket sites were crashing. And most of all, the movies already have a huge following on top of the ones who are going to see it, just because so many others are going to. Lastly, Luke Skywalker. What's so significant about him? He hasn't even been shown yet. Well, that's the thing. The main character of the original trilogy has not been shown yet. Right away, there's something up. There has to be a plot-related reason that Mark has not shown up in the posters yet and will not be a major plot until episode 8. Many are theorizing that he may even be a villain. Now, I personally think that would be really unneeded and dumb. So what exactly does this movie need to have in order to be good? Well, the main things are not be the prequels, not try to copy the storyline of the originals, and not using the characters just for relevancy, and a huge thing being taking risks. Now this is BCTV, and I'm Tyler Morgan, signing off. On today's show, we got to see some behind the scenes on Butler's safety. We saw some cool tattoos. Followed by a restaurant to check out over break. Then found out how long it really takes to brew beverages. Got ideas for movies to find in the library. And last but not least, we saw a review on a movie that'll sure to be a sold out run. In the meantime, check out the reruns of this show weekdays at 11 a.m. or at last week's show at 6.30 p.m. on BCTV Channel 20. Or you can check them all out on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash user slash Butler Radio TV. This, this has been The, the Last, last Campus, Campus Edge for Fall! fall.